Welcome to Chess with TV, episode 23. Today is June 7th, 2014, and today we are playing against the Silicon, a.k.a. AI, uh, also known as artificial intelligence. We're playing against the world's strongest computer player. That's right, there was recently a tournament where only computers could play in it, uh, which is nice because most tournaments computers aren't allowed to play. And the winner of the tournament was Stockfish, which is a great name for a computer, if you know what it means. I don't know what it means. We'll have to look that up. And so we're actually going to play against the highest difficulty Stockfish today, and we're going to beat it, which means we're the world champion. Um, and if we don't beat it, well, I guess if we get a draw, then we're about as good as the world champion. So let's go do that right now. Chesswiz TV. So I got to teach you guys something about the computer. See this button over here, Play With Machine? You want to do this, go to lichess.org, that's L-I-C-H-E-S-S dot O-R-G, and you can play with the machine too. So there's eight levels here. Now, technically speaking, level eight was not what won the tournament. The computer got a little bit more time to think than level eight. But let me show you what happens between the levels. Basically, the computer moves slower at faster time controls. And you know, sorry, slower at higher levels. You guys know about this already. Let's play level one first. I'll show you how it works. So, how fast is it moving? Okay, let's see how fast it moves. Move, 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 move. Okay, it's real fast, right? Okay, resign that. So let's see if it can play at the fastest time control on the website, which is zero minutes and one second per move. Um, this is a great test of the computer because this is how fast I like to play my chess. Okay, so let's see what happens. Can the computer keep up at this time control? Uh, out of time, computer! Out of time! Okay, now you're going to see the most horrible spammy bug in the history of computer science, which is not happening. The computer's keeping up, okay? And it's not playing that well because it's on level one. Resign that. Um, I hope my rating isn't going down from these games. Let's play the most difficult computer opponent one second per move. So this is where it gets interesting. This scale is basically computer gets more time to think. So what's going to happen on level 8 if we've got zero seconds? One second. Can the computer even keep up? Ready? Watch the computer's time over there. It's thinking. It's thinking. Come on. Oh, oh, nice move, computer. And computer's out of time. And what happens? Computer cheats. Computer is still playing with zero time. So now you know why computers aren't allowed in chess tournaments. They cheat. I'll throw away my queen. Zero seconds, and it's still playing chess. Does this seem fair to you? Computer cheats? It's not like using a computer is cheating. It's like computer is cheating. Not fair. So I wanted to play this fast time control against the computer, and it basically just cheated all over my face, and I could not beat it um, because it actually plays its hardest difficulty at its own pace while I have to move a one second to move, otherwise I run out of time. So that is not not fair. So we have to play a longer time control um, to give me a fair chance to think through the moves because uh, it's just not it's not cutting it to have different rules for different different players. Okay, so new opponent, play with the machine. We're going to give us five five minutes because uh, the computer is going to take it. We know that much. Um, so we're playing against the computer here, level eight. Uh, its rating is only 2883, so it's going to die to us. Let's do this. So the nice thing about playing the computer is there's a button over here. Where's the button? There it is. See what that says? propose a tape back. Now this is the one difference between computer and a human. A human is like, you proposed a taste back? I decline your proposal. Computer? Not so. Computer always accepts proposal. So this is the key to beating the computer. We're playing a French defense exchange because that is just so good for white. So good. Uh, there's no way to lose. Actually, there's no way to lose. So French defense exchange is very drawish, drawish opening. Uh, C5, that's making things a little interesting. It's true. I have to admit that. Oh, C5, C4, closing up the queen side. Now it's not quite so balanced. It's not completely symmetrical here. We've got this pawn structure that's asymmetric, which means not symmetrical. Um, so what's going to happen? I could, I could break it, but I don't think I want the resulting pawn structure, so I'll just leave it the way it is. I'll just develop around those pawns. 
Uh, okay, so we're playing against the world's best chess player here. It's not going to be that easy to beat him. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, I need to bring out my other pieces. So f3, knight f1, knight g3 is one option. And another is simply knight f3 immediately. I like f3 because it leaves this bishop with no happy home. It can't come here, it can't go here after f3, so these places aren't that good, it's a bad bishop. Uh, if I play knight f3, then bishop g4, and this bad bishop is doing a lot. It's not even very bad. It's bad because this pawn is on the same color square as the bishop, but once it gets out here, it's not really bad anymore. Um, so I'm going to leave f3 open for a pawn so that he can't do that with his bishop. Yes, bishop there. Okay, so now I just have to finish my development, which would be, um, I've got some knights to deal with here, so queen up. He's taking space on the queen side, I'm trying to make something happen, but I don't think anything's going to happen. So once I move my knight, rooks will trade. I could trade the rooks, carefully. Um, what about knight here, though? It's a little bit more stable. I can hone in on f5. If he plays g6, he creates weaknesses in the dark squares. And my other knight, I guess, could go to e3. I want to trade all the rooks first, because I'm actually playing such a strong opponent that I don't want to make things too complicated. Take the rooks off. Goodbye, rooks. Goodbye, rooks. Oh, switch into the b-file. So when this opens up, black's going to have some play. Should be interesting. Um, uh, Got to bring out my pieces. OK, development is complete. And g6 is played. So now I cannot use f5. That was my secret plan, was knight f5. Uh, any knight will do. But now I have to change my plan. So is this going to open up? Is he going to play b3? b3, take, take. Nah, bishop out of the way. I don't think b3 is coming. So I need to reorganize my knights, because they can't do much anymore. All these squares are attacked. So that's hard to do. Hard to reorg, you know, this is like a bad corporation. There aren't any good squares for my knights. I guess with f3 there won't be any good squares for his knights. Hmm. Hmm. Gonna beat this stockfish AI level 8 here, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna happen. I just have to make my knights as powerful as queens. Maybe I should maneuver my bishop over here to f3. Puts a second attacker there. Knight can come back this way. I'm starting to like that sequence. Take, take, and his rook can't penetrate anywhere too dangerous. Uh, so let's do that. Let's maneuver bishop to f3. Yep, yep. This is going to be scary, because rook, rook down here is coming. Oh, and I can't challenge the file. Uh, maybe I'm too slow. It's looking good for him. Oh, but he wants to defend that. Okay, that gives me a chance to uh, recover. Recover. Um, so queen c2 and, and rook b1. And I'm kind of untangled. Let's go here. Hold c3 a little bit better. And he just steps all down a little bit further. What is the point? Yeah, this is tough. I can't really untangle my queen side. So we'll go after d4. Take, 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 take. And I'm pretend, protecting c3. No matter how much he captures, I capture. Pretty good position for black, because I'm going to get back rank checkmated if I move my rook off this line. I do like rook e7, because hitting this pawn uh, is pretty powerful. He can't easily defend it. But I don't want to get back rank checkmated, so let's protect that first. Now let's see how he deals with rookie 7. He's going to trade, take, take, take. We each have a passed pawn now, but he has two passed pawns. Pretty scary. Can he defend this one? He doesn't want to. No, he's going to promote. He's going to promote first. I can't afford to take that, and I can't afford to not take it. Hmm. Well, let's propose a take back. I propose a take back. Now the nice thing about this button, guys, it actually takes back. Have you ever played with a human being and clicked this button? Useless, useless button. Seriously, you click on it and your opponent is like, hmm, um, well, it's your turn and you're proposing a take back. So the longer I take to decide on this, the more you're going to run out of time. Um, let's do this same sequence except attack over here instead. 
That doesn't work very well. Well, I guess maybe I've lost this position. Yeah, that passed pawn comes down. I, I resign. I click the white flag. I'll rematch you, Stockfish AI level 8. So finally your opponent says, okay, I'll grant you a take back. And he clicks accept take back. Problem solved, right? No. What happens? It takes back your opponent's move. And then it's your opponent's turn. Well, you just moved your queen where it could be taken for free. And then he took it. And then you click, well, take back, please. He sits there while you run out of time. Then he clicks accept take back. And it cancels him taking your queen, and now it's his turn. So what does he do next? Well, does he propose a take back? No, he takes your queen again. And again, it's your turn, and you're running out of time even more. So what do you do? Ah, I don't have a queen. So click take back again. He takes even more time while you're flagging on the clock, and then he accepts, and it's his turn again. Oh, there's a free queen. What do you think he's going to do? You have to click take back twice in order to actually get back to where you're going to move. It's called take back two, and on some servers, you just ask for two moves, um, because what's the point of taking back one move? He's just going to take your piece again. So that's my peeve. It's extremely difficult to actually take back a move when you're playing a human. Now on this position, playing Stockfish AI level 8, it's a gentleman enough it actually takes back both. So, Whoops! I meant to play the French defense, but who cares about mouse slips? The Rui Lopez is the opening of the day, and we have played the exchange variation. So the interesting thing about this position is my doubled pawns and my two bishops. And I don't even know how to play it. Um, I lose this, but queen d4 forks the knight in pawn, so I get it back. He takes queen d4, he saves his knight, I take e4, but then he pins me. So castling has renewed the threat on e5. I don't want to defend it with f6, it weakens my king side too much. Defending it this way just looks so lame. Um, defending it this way would throw away my queen, and then we'd be asking for a take back. None of these other moves are any good, so I don't know what black is even supposed to play here. Um, let's do some research. Exchange French. Um, exchange Re Lopez. This is so cool. You can only do this online, right? Explore this opening. Uh, D takes C6 is what I played. I've never used this website before, guys. I'm winging it. Um, he castled. Now we can see f6 is the most commonly played move. Bishop g4 is next with about half as many plays. Then we've got queen d6 as another alternative. Bishop d6 is blocking in the bishop, and that's the least popular. So now we know. Whoops, I didn't mean to go over there. f6 is the move. Now talk about Hacker. Chess Opening Explorer is the name of this website at chessgames.com. Uh, and if you Google Exchange Rue Lopez, you can find it at chessgames.com. So I have now cheated against the cheater. I don't mind. I don't do this, guys, when I'm really playing a game against a human being. But I figure the other guy's got an opening book. Why shouldn't I have one, too? Hmm. Should I capture? I guess I'll capture. Yeah, that's the way to cheat. You just Google your chess opening. You can even Google the endings. You can be like, okay, it's a rook and pawn against pawn. I mean, rook and pawn against rook. And my king is two files away. Can I draw this? You look it up, and then you find a tutorial, and you run out of time. But it's pretty fun. Hello, Olith123. Thanks for saying hi. G6 ought to protect me. I realized that I just lost a bishop. Oh, look, there's a button over here. I'll just click that button a few times. Fantastic. Fantastic. That looks better. Um, you're still checking me, but I don't have a hanging bishop over there. <laughs> Making it hard to develop. My knight can't go here, I lose this pawn. My knight can't go here, I lose my knight, and so my knight can't go. And that's bad news for the knight. Attack his knight, and then let my knight go. Yeah. Pretty good. Before take backs on the last name, ask go. Why not King G3? Wouldn't it have prevented the promotion? It would have prevented the promotion, that's true. However, he would then defend his A pawn, his rook pawn, with his rook. And he would have those two pawns against my one pawn. Actually it wouldn't have it wouldn't have stopped the promotion. If King G3 then rook A1, black plays rook A1. Um, and then this is getting real bad. You should you should try playing the AI level eight. I can't block that way. Oh, this is horrible. I needed to study some more exchange Rui Lopez. Apparently, after after f6, d4 is way most common, 
and takes, wow, look, I can play my whole chess game on this website, and knight takes, then apparently I should have played c5. And instead, when I played bishop c5, I lost immediately. Oh, look. And when I played bishop d6, white had much better chances. Look at this. White wins, draws, black wins. Is this awesome or what? Let me hide, hide the overlay so you can see it better. Uh, white wins 37.5% uh, of the time. That's over one third. Black only wins 18% of the time. 19 rounded up. That's less than one fifth. And all of these draws. So you could see bishop d6 isn't very good. The best move, which gives black the worst chances, but also white the worst chances, is c5. So unfortunately, I'm almost running out of time, but let's go play that because we're exploring the opening here. So back to your question, Xio. If I had played king g3 in the last game, he'd play rook a1. I couldn't take the a pawn. His next move would be c1 equals q, and I would loose the game. That's not how you spell loose, guys. L-O-O-S-E spells loose not lose. Loose means to release, to open up. Lose means you lost the game. I just lost the game. Oh man, it's been a while. And it's L-O-S-E, so don't spell lose wrong. Okay, so C5 is the right move. C5 is the right move. Thanks for chatting to me guys in chat. For those of you who are wondering who's saying this, where are they saying it? That's the twitch.tv chat room. And you should go there and chat and ask me questions too, because I would love to communicate with you. I would just love it. Should I trade bishops? Uh, king e7, a bishop out, I'll trade. I've lost the two bishops advantage, now I have the one bishops advantage. And that's a nice knight f5, that was really clever of him, to get that knight out there like that. Now I have trouble bringing my bishop in. I'll deal with that trouble by not bringing my bishop in. Hmm. Oh, almost out of time because I spent all that time taking back moves. So I have to make blunders kind of fast. Okay, I got my pieces developed. Oh no, I didn't. Ah, I gotta take that one back, computer, because I have to protect here. So I can't develop any anywhere. This is rough. Okay, this way, now I can bishop b7. There, now I'm developed. Oh, c7's not protected. Oh, now it's protected. Rooks are awesome defenders, and I just lost a piece over there. Oh, it's a pawn. I don't want to lose that pawn. He's attacking c7. This is great for white, and I have 10 seconds. Woo! Tough. Tough position. Okay, how are we doing? Got two pieces for a rook. He's, if I move my knight, he forks off my bishop with rook check. Bishop must escape. And once again, the evil computer res resigns. Promotes a pawn. Wow. Okay, so that's two points for the computer, but we're not giving up. Play a slower time control. That's good advice because the computer is like an instant thinker, so it doesn't even need the time. So another advantage of the slower time control is I can actually spend time talking about the game, letting you guys know what I'm thinking. This is like a great training tool for you because I'm a better chess player. So let's do 10-5. And then we can play a nice, you know, nice game with a lot of communication, a lot of learning, uh, and we'll play the French defense. You guys are going to be grandmasters by the end of this. And you'll all know how to beat level A, level 8, Stockfish AI. What an annoying opening. Um, I know just what to do, guys. Chessgames.com. Uh, openings. <laughs> this is awesome. E4, E6, D4. Wow, I could play my entire game of chess like this. Except he didn't play d4, did he? Um, let's get rid of that. He played knight f3, so let's go back. You can you can really explore openings this way. Knight knight c3. D5. What? The links below are restricted to premium members. I don't know if you guys can read that because it's like size 2.2 font, but it says the links below are restricted to premium members. Become a premium member, you'll support that promote chess learning worldwide, blah, 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 advertisement, unlimited access, blah, blah, guess the move, sacrifice, explorer. I'll sacrifice your explorer. Learn more. What? I can't play my entire chess game? I can't avoid that tab. Cheating? That's a shocker. I guess I have to actually play chess. Well, you guys can check out the chess opening explorer and and explore a few moves of an opening. And, and that was pretty fun. So maybe you'll find another resource online that lets you do that. We have a spectator here. Let me scroll for you. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. D4. Good move. Black has more center than white here. 
Um, but black has the second most center in the game. Bishop g5 here traps my queen. I've seen that one too many times. If you get your queen pulled out to f6, then it's kind of in danger. So take a look at this white move. Bishop to g5. Queen can go here, here. Can't take here, here, here. Blah, blah. Can't go there. Can't retreat. Can't get anywhere. Queen is trapped. So be careful about that. When you get your queen pulled out to f6 in an opening, it happens a lot. Um, but it really only happens a few times before you remember it and you say, I am not getting my queen stuck again. Castles and an amazing attack. Um, that's okay. Only a computer. Only the world's best computer is going to attack me. That doesn't sound too dangerous, does it? Not at all. Not at all. This calls for a drink of water. Okay, so f6, forking some pieces. He trades knights to avoid the fork. Then he plays bishop h6, and I'm pinned. No problem. I just prepare for e5, and no problems at all. Welcome to the paywall. Welcome to your paywall. Try 365chess.com. Thank you for the tip. I'll have to try that out when I'm ready to cheat next. G6 protects H7. I'm so clever. Uh, so my pawns now have weaknesses. The computer was very smart to attack. I'm able to defend this, this attack by moving my pawns forward. But the problem with pawns is they cannot move backwards. So these guys are stuck out here. Now if I could move uh, back to g7 and back to f7, I would have no weaknesses. I would also be checkmated. But in this position, now he's got some targets to attack. He can hit some of these pawns and they can't be easily defended. So this is, this is smart play by the world's best player. What a surprise. Okay, so I'd like to offer some trades to relieve the attack pressure. Uh, e5 opens up a connection to the queen. Now, it would just throw away my queen, but that's not my entire plan. I could defend my queen with rook d8 and then play it. I also like e5 because these pawns are weak. Um, so let's go for that. I offer you a trade of queens, and he takes it. Now, the computer is not thinking, I'm playing a super bad player who's rated like 800 points below me. And so it's not trying really, really hard to force me to make mistakes. Instead, it's just making what it thinks is the best move. And in this case, the best move was trading queens. Now, that simplifies the position. So this is actually good for me. I'm less likely to lose now that the queens are gone, but the computer didn't think that through. He did not think, I'm playing an idiot, keep the queens on the board. He just thought, well, it'll be, it'll be good if I trade queens. So lucky for me. Rook has to move. I'm like in the e-file. I expect him to push d5 and close this up because if he trades it, it becomes pretty equal. Um, and when he does that, then I'm going to roll with these two pawns. Now, an interesting thing about this, if he captures, then he's the one with the open file and I can't easily challenge it because my rooks are kind of severed by this bishop. So let's see how that goes. He captures, so now he's got the open file. I don't want to take with the pawn because that separates my pawns. You can actually kind of get a feel for your pawn health by counting pawn islands, which is groups of pawns that can theoretically defend each other. So in this position, these three pawns form an island, and these three pawns form an island. So I have two pawn islands. He has two as well. These three pawns, and this counts, because theoretically this guy could move up here to f4, and they would all be one island. Same thing here, one island, because this guy can be defended here. So if they're on adjacent files, they're on the same island. I guess if one gets way, way, way far ahead and the other one's stuck back, you could count that as like one and a half islands. If I capture here, I get three pawn islands, because these two can no longer reach this guy over here. So don't get more pawn islands, unless you've got a really good reason to do it, because it weakens your pawns, and pawns are what's important in chess. Pawns are all that's important. Seriously. They turn into queens. Mm. Pretty good tactic here. Uh, if rook f7, he pins my rook to my king, and I can't do anything about it. I can't block it because he would just take that blocking piece for free. So rook has to run, not here, not here, way over here or here. As you can see, he's got the activity. I need a way to challenge him on this file, and so that's going to call for c6, which blocks in my own bishop. But that's what it's going to take. I like that old-time rock and roll. That kind of music just soothes my soul. Thank you, chat person. Thank you, Grand Theft Dog, for posting that in chat. I'm not going to sing it for you, but you got it stuck in people's heads. Okay, so I attack the bishop, and I create a new weakness. My bishop is no longer super powerful. It's blocked by my own pawn. I do relieve the pressure, but this is a common theme here. I relieve pressure by making a permanent weakness in my position, and that's what the opponent is doing to me. Um, so it's, a, it's smart play. Smart play by white. Uh, h6 is another possibility. a6, sorry. Uh, kick the bishop. It moves back. Uh, c4 check, probably. 
um, and then eventually I can regroup and challenge this file. Uh, maybe I just want to take the E file. Uh, maybe A6 and then Rook C E8. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. He will check me and I'll have to move to the corner, but that's not the end of the world. Yeah, let's do that. I like it more because my um, bishop's not blocked. And now I can double on this file. That kind of music just soothes the soul. Oh yeah, hello turtle lover. I don't want to imagine what it looks like to love turtles, but I'm glad you're a turtle lover. Hmm. Gotta get through here. I followed! Well, I'm following you, turtle lover. Thanks for following. That means whenever I'm streaming, you get a notification. But that you don't really need that, because right over here it says when I'm streaming. Three pum jumped. And you gotta figure out what that means. But if you can figure that out, you don't need to follow. But following's nice too. Because people go online like, how many followers does he have? How many followers? Oh, only a billion? I'm not following him. So I appreciate that follow. It'll make more followers follow. Nice stream for sure, not to be totally rude. Oh, thank you. But we've got to play some chess here. Um, so bishop takes h2 and I lose a bishop. That's a pretty good line. What about bishop takes c3? Now that's pretty good, a pawn for a bishop. I want to open up this e file for my rooks because eventually he's going to double up his rooks on the d file and penetrate down here in the 7th and 8th ranks and that's going to be tough for me to defend. Tough. It's actually a tough position because uh, he has points of penetration down here and I don't have any way to get down on this side. So I could close this off. Bishop g6, we keep kind of balanced. Uh, I could try to switch over to the d file but it's slow going and he'll always have the edge over there which means the advantage. So, you know, I could play f5, f4, king up here. I kind of like king here. Yeah, I like this because it's hard for me to improve my position, and that's one way to improve it. I really want to close this thing up because uh, I take and I've got weaknesses he can attack. Mostly this pawn. Um, it becomes a separate pawn island. If I capture with pawn, he, he gets a free pawn. This pawn, when not protected by a pawn, is then has to be protected by pieces. So that's his rook and bishop attacking it, and it's really hard for me to defend. Even if I can defend it, this is important. You might say, oh, that pawn over there, I've got enough defense. That's bad, because your pieces are spending their time defending. You want your pieces to attack him, so he's defending, because pretty soon that overwhelms him and he can't defend everything. So keep that in mind. Look for ways for your pieces to attack, not to defend, especially rooks. Rooks are horrible defenders. Hmm. Hmm. Not a lot of good spots for my rook here. I've got f7 and e6 to choose from. We'll go e6 and then bishop d6 will, will offer some trades here. This is going to give me an isolated pawn with with um, with the uh, captures on d6, which he gladly gives me. So that's too bad, but the thing is, all rook endings are drawn. This is actually a chess saying. <clears throat> it says all. All rook endings are drawn. Look at that, we're in a rook ending. So we've played Stockfish AI with, I believe, no takebacks, and we are now in a drawn ending. Pretty nice. Um, but even drawing a drawn ending is kind of hard, because the computer doesn't say, oh, it's a draw, I'll give you a draw. It actually plays and plays and plays and plays and plays and plays. I did this a couple of days ago, like yesterday. Oh no! I have to defend, defend, defend. Actually, rook e6 should hold the draw because all rook endings are drawn, but it sure is weak. Um, but I'm going to do it because if I take here, he takes e6. I go here, he takes a6. I take, he checks me, and then he pushes his pawn. His pawn is really close to queening, and I could be pushing my pawn. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, um, which way? This way, right? Yeah. If it doesn't work, I've just got that that reverse e button, that take back. Check, it's exactly as I said. Not to be totally nude, nice stream for sure. That's a great typo, you're totally nude. He meant totally rude. He actually typed totally rude, but it's so fun to mispronounce that. So I went into this line thinking, <clears throat> thinking we gotta draw, no worries. Um, and it's gonna turn out to be tough because I've lost a pawn over there. But it's still a draw because all rook endings are drawn. Look at that. Is this a draw? Yes. Can I draw? That's a completely different question. 
completely different. Can I get checkmated? That's a better question because this is really scary. <clears throat> I would wonder if, if, if White can win even though he can't because it's so scary. Because uh, look what he's going to do. He's going to check me at some point. I have to go up and then he's going to take here and it'll be checkmate. Actually, that's right now is when that's happening. That didn't take long. Hmm. G5 check. I have to move to H5 and Rook takes H7 checkmate. Ah. Oh. Well, that's not very good. You are a good beat to beatboxer. That's true. I spent my entire life learning how to annoy my family. I had no beatboxing training. I only experimented. And eventually I sounded like this. So here's how you do it. You go like the letter V. That's your kick drum. And then and then you got a variety of other sounds. Not going to do that. I'm going to get checkmated. Oh, no. Um, does this save me? No, I lose. This is horrible. Maybe I can pick up this pawn. I can't. Three pawns now and he wins. I'll just wait back here because the good thing about waiting back here is he can't advance his king. Ha! You're not making a lot of progress there, Stockfish AI level 8. So you got your poof and then you got your... You've got your... That's your that's your snare drum. God, it's just the letter K. And then Hmm. Do I have a draw? No. Do I have have a draw? It's, it's bad. Hmm. I defend, but he attacks my rook. And then you've got your tss for the for the uh, the hi hats. It's just T S. So you got your poof and your and, you're tss, and it sounds like that's your basic sound. It's nice that my microphone's up here so it doesn't sound like I'm blowing into it. It's a pretty nice mic. Hmm. Barging in uninvited, blah, blah, blah. If you want to hear what that says, you got to go to chat and read it. I think I'm going to lose this position, and it's pathetic because I let him win it. Um, I let him win. I could have played rookie six and defended. Here he checks, I have to come back, and rook g7 check, I have to move, and he picks up this pawn, and there's three pawns to one. No good. I can't pick up anything this way. Well, let's try anyway. Yeah, this is horrible. Horrible. Check, mate. Oh, no! Guys, when it's checkmate, there's no take back button. Seriously. And, and the opponent has left, so I can't rematch. Annoying opponent has left. This is Cillian beast. It's actually a silicon beast. Ah, oh, I had a draw. I had a draw, but let's play again. Come on. Bring it, computer. I was even black, which means you want a draw, right? Because you're black. New game against opponent. <clears throat> so when I was first learning chess, I was actually age 12, which is really, really old for learning chess. Most people who are strong players started very young. Um, so when I was 12, my brother got me a book. I'm not going to tell you what book it was on this episode, because you're going to have to watch the future episode when I tell you. And one moment, I'm going to sneeze. Thank you, Mute. That was saved everybody's eardrums. <clears throat> and I learned about the Sicilian defense, but I'd never heard of the word Sicilian. So obviously, I didn't think it was the Sicilian defense. What did I think? I thought it was the silicon defense, because I knew what silicon was. I was a programmer. At age 12, I was a programmer. You should have seen my games. I made the most awesome games when I was 12. Yep. Um, and so I called this a silicon, the silicon defense for a long time. And it worked great, because that's the beauty of being wrong, is that if you don't know it, it's a lot like being right. It's pretty much the same thing. It's when someone tells you, then you're like, oh, I'm wrong. Um, but before that, it's just fine. So. Silicon defense, pretty strong defense, just about as good as the Sicilian defense. <clears throat> Indeed. Wiz, can we play some games? Thanks for asking. No. Well, well, there will be time for that, just not this episode. This episode is play against computer. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give you guys, is he trying to check me again? Same deal, right? 
Um, and if I push, maybe he'll throw away his bishop on h6. I take, queen takes, and now he's threatening mate over here. Only my knight protects it. Very scary. Let's see if he does it. Yep. Only my knight protects his checkmate. And what's he going to play? Rook e3, rook g3, checkmate. This is very, very hard to stop. Impossible to stop. The only way to stop things that are impossible to stop is with the white flag. And, and that, that's pretty effective, actually. That stops it. Hmm. I warned ya. Boom! And I'm still dead. Entirely. Okay, so I've stopped the queen h7, so now I can move my knight. Not that there's anywhere to move it. Block with something? I think I'm toast. Really, really entirely toast. But hey. That doesn't mean I can't move my pieces. What's the score? We each have a minor piece, a rook, and a queen. He has six pawns, and I have four. That's a bad score. I give. Stockfish AI wins again. AI level 8. Nice. Game was drawn. That's true, Matt Spy. He actually took a look at it. Thank you, Matt Spy. He went to that rook ending, and what do you know, all rook endings were drawn, including that one. So I could have drawn that the Stockfish AI level 8 without any takebacks, and then I could post in the forums like everybody does when they do that. And they're like, look, I drew! And then everyone says, you cheated, what AI did you use? And then I'll say, I didn't really cheat. Watch Chesswiz TV episode 23. Oh, wait, I used the Chess Opening Explorer, and so I cheated. What is this? This is not the Rui Lopez. Okay, here comes cheating. E4, E5, Knight F3. Knight c6, bishop b5, and knight... See, look, it's way down the list. Only 579 out of thousands and thousands of, of games have gone this way. And it's really good for white. White wins almost half of the games. I don't know if you guys can read that, but this is almost 50%. Um, so it's really good. And knight takes d4 is most common. Duh. And then pawn takes. And then black use white castles. Oh, this is awesome. Bishop c5... Oh, and I have to stop and become a premium member. It was worth a shot, so now I know what to do. I could learn some openings this way, guys. Bishop c5. Oh, he's not playing that, so I can go back and see what, what, what the other move is. a6. Only four games have gone a6, and black has not won any of them. This is boding well, and now I have to become a premium member. Well, it was worth a shot. Worth a shot. So how does white win all these games? The most improbable of all chess players. Toast. Do you know what the problem with becoming toast is? Hmm. It means you lose if you become toast. But it's pretty good with the fried liver attack, because fried liver and toast is pretty good. Take, and then rookie one check. I'm liking this. He can't even rook he can't even capture back. Now it's not check, but that's okay. So I've got eight pawns still, and our opponent our lovely opponent has only seven. Advantage for white. That's pretty good because I'm white. Hmm. Just have to make about thirty more brilliant moves. And we'll have a great game here. Where does this bishop go, and where does this knight go? The knight cannot go to c3. Its best square is d2, but that blocks in the bishop. So the bishop comes out first. So why xeo? You ask, can we play some games? The answer is yes, because I'm going to give you guys a special treat. After we're done beating up on the computer, aka computers beating up on us, we're going to go out to lightchess.org slash tournament, which is here. And we're going to play in the Lie Chess Weekly Blitz. Whoa, yeah! Just for fun, guys, we're playing in a Blitz tournament after this. Um, and so, if you want to play me, join that Blitz tournament, and you'll probably get matched against me at least once. And then you'll be on air playing against ChessWiz TV, on ChessWiz TV, playing ChessWiz. It'll be great. Don't miss it. So he gets my pawn back, no big surprise. I think this pawn's kind of weak, but after c5 it's kind of strong. That's life. Yeah, suddenly black's position's kind of good. I guess I shouldn't have given that away so easily. Hmm. Queen out? Because if I knight f3, then my queen is permanently stuck back here. After queen d2, he could take my knight, capture with the pawn, and look at that, I've got one, two, three. Whoops! Take back. Uh, I did not mean to push that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawn islands. That's not seven pawn islands. This is one. This would be one over here. But with this pawn up here, this is two separate islands because they can't defend each other. So one, two, three, four pawn islands against his two because this is all one because the pawn can come up. Um, so that would be a very pawn bad pawn structure. So knight f3 would be okay, but then queen d2 would, would give me a problem. Um, knight e4 is a lot better, however. 
so much better that I'm playing it immediately. And now my queen can go flying! Fly, queen, fly! I like this. My pieces are out! My pieces are in like Flynn. Now I need to get my other rook in the game and development will be complete. Hmm. C5 can't be played yet, but you know he's thinking about it. Just double my rooks, is that all? Is that the best I can do? Queen g5 offers a trade, which I would not play, except I'm playing Stockfish AI level 8, so I would love to trade queens, but I have a feeling he wouldn't trade. He would just move up um, to d7, and then I would have wasted my move. No, then I could play knight f6 check and win his queen, okay? So let's look at some other things he could do. He can't move to the e-file, or knight f6 check wins his queen. He can't move here, knight takes, here bishop takes. I'm trading queens with you, bro! Oh yeah, okay, so now we're closer to a to a nothingness game, but we're playing Stockfish AI level 8, so nothingness sounds great to me. That'd be great. Oh, I had the opportunity to throw away peace and pawn on f7. I mean, bishop and knight against for, for a rook and pawn. But I'm glad I didn't do it. Because that's not usually a good trade. Hmm. That went pretty well for him. Because I blocked off my super nice file. Now I have to content myself with this lame -o file. Of course he's going to play c5, c4, and trap my bishop. But a4, a4, what's going to happen then? Take, take, and his pawns are sucky. Uh, if he plays c4 then, I'm forced back, and he gets a free pawn, but he's got a lot of pawn islands. Um, so maybe a3 is better so that he doesn't get a free pawn. Because mm, you know c5 is coming. You just know it. Let's switch gears here. Um, so this move, take take. Uh, not yet. We'll just we'll just hide back here. Oh, that was smart, guys. This is a really smart move because I'm stuck on c2 now. This is a white square, same color as my bishop, same color as his bishop. Now his bishop can be the attacker on this pawn. All my bishop can do is be the defender. So this is a good move for him, forcing my pawns onto white. You see, this is on white. To defend it, I'll play f3, which is on white. So all my pawns end up on white squares, which is good. He's got the white squared bishop, and so do I. So this is really clever. Um, c3 is a clever move. So do I trade rooks? No, he just he just comes in even more if I do that. If I come here, though, he trades, and his pawn gets very scary. But let's try it. He does it immediately. Ooh, so scary. With b4, he's got two protected past pawns, and I'm toast. Toast again. It's a common breakfast food when you're playing against computer AI level 8. Can I get my king over here to stop everything in time? See, I could set up a defense with bishop b3 and pawn a4, but then my position is so bad because they're all on white squares. So let's get the king in. Come on, king. I hate it, but more pawns on white is what's happening here. Good work, king. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. YXEO joined the weekly tourney. Good. We'll play some chess. <clears throat> it's going to be a long episode today, but it's going to be a good one. If I could draw this stupid computer or beat it. Take, rookie two check, king moves, rook takes bishop. These pawns are so deadly. I need to offer you a take back. But this is no good either. <sighs> Ouch. Pawn is pinned. Let's try this. This should be interesting. Will one pawn promote faster than three pawns? Stupid question. I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't look very good for white. This looks... <laughs> There's a proverb about two pawns on the 6th rank connected past, and it says you lose. But two pawns on the 7th rank, uh, there's not even a proverb about that, because you, you lost when they got to the 6th rank. This position here where they got together like that, that's when I lost. So I guess I have to defend like this, and then I lose my pawns. So that de defense didn't work either. Let's try one more passive defense. Nope. Nope, that's not good either. Okay. But we didn't try rook e3. Oh, I can't defend that way either. So he totally wins. Let's go back one more move. This is like finding your way through a maze. Where are the walls? Apparently, 
apparently back one more. Apparently King F1 wasn't any good. Back one more. Okay, so in this position we have to move back here. Okay. Oh, clever move now. He picks up this pawn. My rook's not defending it. Because my other rook is busy. Trade rooks, take... He back rank checkmates me, so I can't do that either. Okay. No good. Got to go back a little bit more. I have to trade there, so a little bit more. There's the brilliant C3. A little bit more, right? Because that was, that was rough. And one more move. Now we're looking good, guys. We just rewound half the game, and it's a great chess position now. Pawn's on black. Oh, he's got a protected past pawn. Ouch! Ouch! For those of you guys who don't know, this is like salt in a rotating knife wound that is in your heart. That's what a protected past pawn is like. Besides that, my bishop is completely trapped. He wins it. But also, he's got a pawn that no pawns can stop, protected by a pawn. That's ingredients ingredients to death. So we can't allow that either. So what about a4? Didn't, we haven't tried a4 yet. Okay, so same same brilliancy here with c3. Good moves by him. Okay, this, this defends everything. Yuck. Yeah, and now my a4 is weak. Okay, so let's rewind some more. So I've got some advice from Clark E. Rubber. Great middle name. I like that. I like that E in there. Clark says you should move your way through the AIs, and when you get to level eight, then you can play level eight. That's great advice. Not for this episode, because we're fighting level eight this episode. Now we're losing to level eight over and over and over and over, but we're at least we're fighting. Um, but maybe another episode will do that. We'll start with level one and we'll beat it so fast if you blink it's gone five minutes in So then we'll play level two and we'll beat it so fast because level two is like programmed to make horrible moves Whoops whoops like that one. Whoops take back f3 Okay, all my pawns are on white, but I defended hmm, He's thinking about how to get a protected passer again uh, So that would be fun good good suggestion Clark James Clark, but not not for today so this is just so good for black. We both have pawn majorities. I've got a majority on the king side, he has it on the queen side, but his is more advanced, he's got his rooks behind his power here, and my pieces are not as cool as his. So. Hmm. Hmm. This is rough. Oh man. My bishop's doing nothing back here. This thing plays a good endgame. If I push, bishop f3 skewers my rooks, he gets a rook. What do you know? The world's best computer opponent plays a good ending. And now bishop b5 traps my rook. So, nope, I'm not trapped. Something on the board is trapped. Do you guys see what it is? Here, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Now it's gone. And now I'll give you another hint. That is trapped. Very, very, very trapped. Have you ever seen a taller pawn than that? That's basically a pawn A2. Um, maybe worse than a pawn, because it can't pawn break. <laughs> Man, I must be down at least a bishop in this position. But hey, I can prevent the d3 advance. And now I got my rook trapped, so we can't play that line. Actually, this pawn falls, and he, he's going to win. Horrible. Okay, I resign. One more game. This one's going to be a bit faster, and if we can't beat it this game, we're just going to have to give up and um, try again on another episode. But it's been a lot of fun. We did get that drawn position. Uh, we did get that one draw. So how did that happen? How did what happen? Be more, be more clear, person on chat who says, how did that happen? Be clearer. Never seen a trapped bishop like that. Yes, how did that happen? I'm wondering the same thing. He played an amazing, amazing sequence of pawn moves that trapped that in. If you want to see the exact move sequence, you can go to lychess.org, click on players at the top, type chesswiz in the search. Now, chesswiz is hard to spell. It's spelled over here in weekly letters. Um, so you got to type that correctly. Then you'll find my profile, and you can look at all these games and be like, wow, he sure made a lot of mistakes. You can see those games. 
So if you want to see the games, go see the games. That was the trappedest bishop ever. Ornicar, you're here. Thank you. You've come to my rescue. Guys, Ornicar is the creator of this website. Now I can complain. If you didn't see the beginning of the cast, Ornicar, I'm going to repeat myself because when you play level 8, one second per move, the computer just cheats. It runs out of time and it keeps playing. Man. And so I can't play it one second chess, which is my best chess by far. Um, it runs to zero and then it and then it just traps pins your queen to your king and you lose your queen well I lost my queen take back take back take back maybe this way nope that's not very good wow so knight h4 was a pretty good move threatening this junk because this the real weakness here guys is this pawn structure here e6 f5 is not what black wants if this pawn were back on f7 like this the position would be fine with no weaknesses ignore the fact that his bishop could take my queen if that were true his knight could take my queen also so don't worry about that what that's right so this weakness is serious for two reasons first of all this is now a backwards pawn which means there's no pawn friends that can help defend it if it tries to advance this square is very well guarded and white can play well just to attack this square with everything um, he moved his knight off only for this tactical reason of winning a pawn in these in these lines we've seen he's gonna win e6 or he's gonna pin my queen something horrible um, I guess maybe I could defend like this but if not for that he's gonna pile up on this square and this pawn is a permanent weakness you don't want your pawns to need defense from your other pieces pawns need to be protected by pawns so that you're freed up to attack your opponent so this is a weakness a very weak pawn now second problem this is a, a hole in my position I can never attack this square with a pawn because the only pawns that could hit it, which are on these two files, have either been captured or moved past. So if this were back here, there would be no hole. Or even if this were here, there'd be no hole because I could theoretically kick a piece with f6. But once I'm on f5, serious hole. Another problem is this is near my king, so there's weaknesses in the squares around my king that gives him attacking chances, especially with h6 push. This would be better back here. Um, because then these two pawns attack these three squares well. Once I've pushed to h6, I've got holes in here that pawns are not defending, and so those are potential outposts for his pieces, potential squares that could come into play when he gets some tactics going. So for example, here, knight g6, right now I could just take it for free, but when my queen actually gets it off of her lazy uh, body part, then the knight is going to have some more squares that it can use. So queens don't like to defend, and neither do rooks. Queens actually like it a little bit better than rooks. Uh, because the queen can be defending way off there in the corner while she does something useful. Whereas rooks, if they're defending, they're basically putting their faces in the way and they can't do anything. For example, this rook here was just blocked by two pawns trying to defend e6. Um, and there's another clever tactic. If I capture, he picks up a rook. Um, and if I don't capture, he wins that free pawn. So my position has fallen apart. And you guys, if I rewind a little bit here, you can see that it comes because of f5. It's because of this weakness. And he forced f5. This is this is this strong computer opponent doing this to me. I, I normally I would never play f5. Never do it because of the weaknesses we've talked about. But in this position, my queen is just about trapped. I played f5 to to save my queen. Now I can go to h5. I see. Um, and it should. Queen h5 is the right move, f5 is the wrong move. You might say no problem, I mean I'm taking some space, but because of the reasons I mentioned with the hole here, the weak backward pawn here, f5 creates a permanent problem in my position. So queen h5 would be a better move because it does not create these weaknesses. Now there's tactical problems in this position. White has more space, sorry strategic problems. White has more space, white has better development because he has three pieces out. I just have one in the queen. Um, so he has the better chances here. Even if I play good moves, White has the better position, but let's try a few good moves. We've got a minute or two uh, before we go over to the tournament. So, oh, and he's trapped my queen again. So you can see the, the kind of problems I have. The queen out here is called misplaced, misplaced queen. Uh, that's like a technical chess term. It means it's the wrong square. People use the word misplaced to mean you've got it out on the wrong square. This is not the right place for the queen in this position. It'd be much happier um, over here, b6, a5, or even c7 after pawn c6, or, or even c5. Um, pawn c5. So the queen likes to be on one of these squares where she can be relatively safe and have some flight squares to escape to if she's under attack, plus exert some influence over the board. Over here, misplaced queen. Um, and it got that way because of knight takes knight pulling my queen out, and I didn't want to waste another move to pull it in. Pretty soon I got sucked out this way. So that was horrible. Horrible, horrible, and my queen is going to get completely trapped out here. So the way to save my queen, it's not clear. F6 creates the same kinds of weaknesses that we were talking about, because this square is now not defended by a pawn. So this becomes a potential line of attack for white. It's not a backwards pawn. 
um, because it could theoretically advance, but it's difficult for me. It, it's not defended by a pawn, and advancing it might be hard, and in the meantime, it's having to be defended by pieces. So I'll demonstrate that by playing that move, and then you guys can see what the computer does to me. So he starts to attack it. I want to bring out my knight, but I would lose this pawn. I want to fianchetto my bishop with b7, bishop b8, uh, b6, bishop b7. Same problem, I have to keep a defender here. So I'll spend another move to defend it. This isn't necessarily best, but I'm kind of demonstrating what's going on here. So white in two moves has generated a mating attack against h7. To defend that, I have to create more pawn weaknesses. So we saw this as an, in an earlier game against the computer, uh, where I had three pawns like this, and I talked about how it was weak. Got the same problem here. Pawns are not defending pawns, and they're out there where they can be attacked. So I, again, can't play b6. Now I've got my rook under attack if I do that. So he's tying up my development pretty nicely. I can still develop with c6, then b6, then bishop b7, but it's slow. Meantime, he's bringing out his pieces. Uh, see, more holes. This is because of g6. Now there's more holes here. So watch the computer beat me. Finally getting my pieces out. More attacks on e6. So this is the problem with f6. This pawn's not defended by a pawn. You can see how hard it would be for me to advance it. Advancing it would be the right kind of strategy for me because it gets rid of the weakness. Um, but you can see I'm just way too slow. I needed to spend three moves to get half my queen side developed. And that's just halfway. I still need my rook, still need my knight out in the game. Meantime, this attack is just coming too quickly. Three attackers now on e6. I only have one defender, plus king and queen on this diagonal. So white's done a really good job converting a development advantage into a serious attack. Um, I would like to fly my bishop up here to neutralize some of the threats, but I simply can't do it. And I lose e6. So good game, computer. Hope we get to do more of that in the future. Let's jump over to the tournament. And I'm going to rename, see this over here? Uh, it says episode 23 Stockfish Level 8. Um, I'm going to rename that, guys. So to do that, I'll go to twitch.tv slash chesspoo slash dashboard um, and change this to Blitz Weekly Blitz Tournament uh, Update. So I think, whoa, I don't want to see that ad. I think that's going to update over here. Maybe it doesn't. So I'm actually going to go off air for a minute or two so that that updates. Also, I can rest my ears. Also, we can get ready for the tournament. So the tournament is here, and it starts in three minutes. So I'll be back in a minute or two. So don't go anywhere. The stream will go back online. I'm just leaving and coming back. First of all, it's going to um, separate the recording out into two recordings, which is nice. And secondly, it's going to um, change that title. And also, I get a break to drink some water. So I'll see you guys in a moment. This has been Chess Wiz TV, episode 23, part A. Come back in one minute for part B.